4 trillion dollars. That's how much money is being managed by hedge funds globally. An industry that's notorious for making money whilst the rest of the world suffers, hedge funds are often seen as the pinnacle of high finance. However, where did this all begin? The term hedge fund originally derives from the investment strategy of hedging against market movements, maximizing returns and reducing risks by choosing either to buy or sell securities within the market. The idea being to make money regardless of market direction. Today, the hedge fund industry comprises a diverse group of strategies that can invest across asset classes to meet a variety of portfolio needs and returns for their clients. Historically, hedge funds have been largely unregulated, but this is beginning to change. The global financial crisis of 2008, as well as multiple hedge fund collapses and the ever-changing investor landscape have all leaned in towards greater regulation of the hedge fund industry as a whole. More on this later on. In order for us to look forward within this realm, we first have to take a step back into the history of hedge funds. In 1949, Alfred Winslow Jones created the first hedge fund strategy. His thesis was simple but groundbreaking. He sought to separate two risks, market risk and specific equity risk involved in investing in stocks by creating a market neutral portfolio. But what exactly does that mean? Alfred bought assets he believed would rise in value relative to the overall performance of the market. However, at the same time, he betted against assets whose prices he expected to decline, otherwise known as short selling. As such, Jones created market neutrality, i.e. a market neutral portfolio, whereby his portfolio's performance depended on choosing the correct stocks as opposed to guessing the correct direction. His fund or his portfolio was hedged against market movements, thus coining the term hedged fund or more commonly hedge fund. Alfred went on to create the first hedge fund product in 1952. At this time he also converted his hedge fund from a general partnership to a limited partnership. More importantly Alfred's hedge fund had two key elements leverage and fees. He borrowed money from investors to increase the size of his bets on stock prices he expected to rise. In addition, he created the 2 and 20 fee structure that we so often hear of thrown about in the world of hedge funds. 2 and 20 simply means investors pay a 2% management fee to Alfred for managing and investing their money and a 20% performance fee on top, i.e. Alfred gets 20% of the overall returns from the investments made. This proved to be extremely lucrative as Alfred's fund was up 17.3% the year after it was formed. Before we go into the 60s and the rise of the hedge fund, I want to talk to you about today's video sponsor, Toggle, which is a product that's been created by hedge fund managers. Toggle is a platform for both institutional and retail investors, and it leverages AI artificial intelligence to help you get unique insights to allow you to invest better. Toggle helps active investors, both professional and retail. As long as a user actively follows markets and invests semi-regularly, there is a good chance they'll love the platform. Toggle looks at billions of data points across millions of time series each and every day. Toggle then takes the interesting data, the assets that are related to it, identifies prior times through history that milestones had been seen and does all of the statistical analysis to identify if the assets have had a consistent response. For example, did they usually go up or did they go down? If that insight meets a certain threshold of statistical robustness, then it's considered an actionable insight. Actionable insights are not trading signals. They're intended to help investors get a sense of all else being equal. Is the security poised to go up or down given the current data landscape? Toggle looks at many lenses, including momentum, valuation, macroeconomics, etc. Another feature of Toggle is News Insights. This uses AI artificial intelligence to help you decide what pieces of financial news are favorable or unfavorable for a particular stock based on its historical data. Now, for those of you interested in investing in the financial markets, whether you do it professionally or for an institution, or if you're a retail investor and you do it as a hobby, definitely do check out Toggle. There's lots of that you can find out on their website. Institutional focused investors, they've got Toggle Pro. And for those of you who are retail investors and 
who might invest you know as a hobby they've got toggle co-pilot so hit the link in the video description below and you can find out more about them now let's get back to the video when you're making lots of money for lots of people the world has a way of finding out about it and this is naturally what happened in the 1960s following a 1966 article in Fortune magazine that highlighted the strong performance of Alfred's fund. By then, Alfred's hedge fund had outperformed the best traditional fund over the previous five years by 44% even after fees were taken into account. This was unheard of. As you can imagine, hedge funds started popping up left, right and center. And then in 1969, the first fund of hedge funds was created. Now what's a fund of hedge funds? Simply put, it's one investment vehicle which gives investors access to a group of hedge funds, thus reducing the risk of investing all of your capital in one hedge fund. Simple. The 70s were not as glorious for hedge funds as the decade beforehand. The early 70s recession combined with stock market crashes of 73 and 1974 resulted in many hedge funds closing down as the industry struggled against market risks. Alfred's fund itself lost over 10% more than the S&P in the 12 month period ending 31st May 1970. However, what's truly impressive is that over the 34 years that his fund was active, Alfred only made losses in three years. In 1975, enter Raymond Thomas Dalio, more commonly known as Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater Associates, one of the, if not the largest hedge fund in the world as of today, managing in excess of $160 billion in assets under management. Once the world got past the recessions and crashes of the 70s, everything seemed back on track in the 80s with the hedge fund industry continuing its rapid growth and expansion, propelled with outperformance and overwhelming interest from wealthy individuals and families. Assets under management were in the hundreds of millions in the early 80s. However, by the late 80s, assets under management for the largest funds were more than $1 billion each. In 1980, Julian Robertson started Tiger Fund. It started out with $8 million and at its peak, it was worth over $22 billion. Spoiler alert, it collapsed in the early 2000s. Sometimes you just gotta know when to quit while you're ahead. However, the legacy of Tiger Fund has lived on as a number of its employees started their own funds, which proved to be top performers. When thinking of hedge funds in the 80s, just picture a small group of male investors investing however they'd like, making use of leverage to maximize trade size and benefit from the heightened volatility from the currency and commodity markets. This all resulted in outsized returns for investors on the right side of the trade. The 80s were solid for hedge funds, however, they were nothing compared to the 90s. The 90s raised awareness to superstar hedge fund managers, but it also was the decade in which tons of new investing strategies were formed. What initially started out as a pool of assets going long and short on equities, slowly grew to include strategies more focused on arbitrage, macro investing, distressed investments, and activism, to name a few. One of the major events of the 90s was the close collapse of LTCM long-term capital management, a hedge fund which had to be bailed out by Wall Street and the Fed. I'd highly recommend everyone to read the book. It's one of those books which once you start, you can't put it down and so you finish it in a few days. By 2008, total assets under management across hedge funds near $2 trillion. After all, institutional investors such as pension funds, sovereign wealth funds and insurance companies were likely looking for strong returns after the dot-com bubble burst. The increase in investment into hedge funds from institutional investors moved hedge funds further into the mainstream throughout the 2000s. And then the global financial crisis hit and disrupted the whole world. Many funds had no option but to close down on the back of taking substantial losses. Investors got scared and withdrew their capital. As a result, assets under management dropped heavily. Though not a hedge fund per se, the $65 billion Ponzi scheme run by Bernie Madoff led to fundamental changes in the way that hedge funds and other alternative investment vehicles and firms were controlled and monitored. The 2010s brought about major changes in how the hedge fund industry was regulated. 
Prior to this, the industry was largely unregulated. The Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act came into effect in the early part of the decade in direct response to the global financial crisis, leading to greater requirements for registering and reporting to the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. In Europe, the Alternative Investment Fund Manager Directive, otherwise known as AIFMD, forced hedge funds to upgrade their compliance and operational frameworks. The Volcker Rule, which prohibited banks from certain investment activities and their ownership of certain alternative asset funds led to an influx of new funds as prop traders, traders using the firm's money instead of external funding, spun out of hedge funds. The overall result of these and other regulations such as MIFID 2 was that barriers to entry and competition grew as the hedge fund industry was increasingly becoming more and more professionalized and institutionalized. Although regulation stepped up, hedge funds bounced back from the global financial crisis with industry assets exceeding $2 trillion again in 2011 exceeding $3 trillion in 2019 and closing in on $4 trillion at present. The industry is still adapting to an increasingly regulated landscape and changing investor client base. The hedge fund world of the 80s and 90s, however, are long gone. In this day and age, the focus is on providing solutions for clients as opposed to a given product, as hedge fund clients are becoming increasingly sophisticated and selective. Hedge funds have been around for more than 70 years. They've clearly stood the test of time, having outlasted recessions and market cycles and crashes. Many have succeeded where others have failed, and they've created and diminished billionaires due to their entrepreneurial nature, unique and varied investment styles, and risk-loving strategies. The future of hedge funds will have a lot to live up to, given the compelling history of the industry, but this is something that will unfold with time. Yo, what's going on people? Thank you for making it to the end of the video. Before you click away, if you enjoyed this video or learn anything new, please do hit the like button and then subscribe if you haven't already. The next video I'm thinking of doing is a brief history of private equity. Let me know if that's of interest to you or if you've got any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. Check out some of these videos for more on hedge funds and I will see you in the next video. Peace.